In this recently published paper, a potential impact for dietary fiber on the gut longevity axis was identified. So let's jump right into the data. So first, there was the LRC group, which was defined as centenarians from a longevous region. And these people had an average age of 103 years. And in the second group, there was the LRE group, which were elderly from a longevous region too. And in that group, the average age was 63 years. So then the next obvious question should be, what's a longevous region? So the United Nations defines the, a longevous region as having 7.5 centenarians per 100,000 people. So then the next question should be, where is this longe longevous region and what is its centenarian rate? So it's found in China and more specifically within Bama County in the Guangxi prov province. And there they have 43 centenarians per 100,000 people, which is five to six times uh, a greater rate than the UN definition for a longevous region. All right, so then returning to the baseline characteristics, there were 30 centenarians and then there were 31 elderly, so a total study of 61 people, relatively small study. And then they had relatively similar BMIs of 20 for the centenarians, 20.8 in the elder, elderly. So then what was the potential impact for dietary fiber on the gut longevity axis? So fecal uh, short chain fatty acids, SCFAs, were higher in the centenarians when compared with the 63 year olds. And that's what we can see here. So we've got the concentration of various short chain fatty acids going from the two carbon acetic acid up to the five carbon valeric acid. So we've got those there on the X axis. And then our, for our two groups in red slash orange, we've got the centenarians and in purple, we've got the elderly or the 63 year olds. So then we can see for the three primary short chain fatty acids, acetate, propionate, and butyrate, in terms of abundance, these, these are the major fat, uh, short chain fatty acids in terms of being most abundant, we can see that they were significantly increased in the centenarians when compared with the 63 year olds. Also significant increases for relatively smaller abundant short chain fatty acids, including isobutyrate and valerate were also found in the centenarians such that the total short chain fatty acids, total levels in fecal samples were higher in the centenarians when compared with the 63 year olds. So how are fecal short chain fatty acids, SCFAs related to diet? So short chain fatty acids are produced by soluble fiber fermentation. Uh, and it's important to note soluble fiber because insoluble fiber is not fermented by gut bacteria to make short chain fatty acids. So we can see that uh, illustrated here. So soluble dietary fiber is fermented by gut microbiota or gut bacteria into the three pr uh, primary short chain fatty acids in terms of abundance, acetate, propionate, and butyrate. So then the next question is, was dietary fiber, higher, uh, in, uh, was dietary fiber intake higher in centenarians when compared with the younger age group? And it was, and that's what we can see here. So nutrient intakes on the y-axis, and then we've got protein, fat, carbohydrate, and dietary fiber content when comparing the centenarians, again, in red slash orange versus the 63-year-olds in purple. And what we can see is that the centenarians had a significantly higher uh, dietary fiber intake. Now, interestingly, the 63-year-olds had an increased a uh, significantly increased carbohydrate intake when compared with the centenarians. And that's important because an increased carbohydrate intake without a higher fiber intake suggests that the di overall diet quality in the centenarians may have been better than the 63 year olds. And in support of that, fruits and vegetables, which are abundant in soluble fiber, have carbohydrates. So you'd expect a higher carb diet would have a higher level of dietary fiber. Now, I'm not here to say dietary fiber, uh, dietary carbohydrates should be higher or lower in the diet. Uh, I, I prefer the biomarkers tell the story, but at least in this study, it's possible that the dietary quality was better in the centenarians in addition to having a higher dietary fiber content. Also note that levels of protein and fat were not different when comparing the centenarians with the 63-year-olds. So besides uh, looking at group-based differences for fiber intake and short-chain fatty acids, dietary fiber intake was also significantly correlated with levels of fecal short-chain fatty acids when looking at the total study cohort or the 61 people. And we can see that here. So uh, here we're looking at correlations between dietary fiber intake with short-chain fatty acids and feces. And then on the left, we've got R and P. And if you're uh, familiar with this channel, those should not be uh, foreign uh, letters as the R is the correlation coefficient and P is the p-value with less than 0. Uh, 0. 0 0.05 being a statistically significant correlation. And what we can see is that relatively higher dietary fiber intakes were significantly correlated with the three primary short chain fatty acids in terms of their abundance in feces, acetate, propionate, and butyrate. 
And also there was a significant correlation for uh, uh, valeric acid or valerate, such that the total level of short chain fatty acids was significantly correlated with uh, a relatively higher dietary fiber intake. So in other words, the higher the dietary fiber intake, that was significantly correlated with each of these short chain fatty acids and the total amount of short chain fatty acids in stool. So that then raises the hypothesis. If we increase dietary fiber intake, that should increase fecal short chain fatty acids. And then is that an approach for reaching centenarian status? Now, everything presented in this data was correlation, but could this be a causative pathway involved in longevity? These data based on the correlation may be yes. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, dietary tracking, or if you just would like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.